Right. So are we are we ready to start? Shall we get going? Yep. Well, good um, morning. Yep. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Quaker Talk. Last week we had Joe Flanagan speaking, and this week she's uh, generously offered to come back and continue the discussion uh, and is going to be talking. Oh, uh, I did have the title written down. Um, Joe will tell you the title, but it's on the topic of Extinction Rebellion and Bristol Climate Choir and um, and and Money Rebellion. So, Joe, uh, over to you. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a member, by the way, of Joe's Affinity XR Affinity Group, Earthquakes, and so I've I've been with Joe on some of these actions, and it's really interesting to hear Joe talking about them. So, Joe, you're ever so welcome back. And um, <laughs> tell, us, tell us the title. Of the I was I was desperately trying to seek to find out what the title was of this week's talk, and I found it. It's uniting for a greener, fair future. Um, so. Um, yeah, so it's it's continuing the discussion that we had last last week, and it's lovely to be here with you all. And thank you for joining me. And um, yeah, it's it's um, the next steps, isn't it? So last week, just to have a quick recap, I was talking about the clever policy from BP and others in the oil industry several decades ago to keep the focus on the individual carbon footprints and off them, um, which works, has worked very successfully. Um, and that's not to say that as Quakers, we all need to be doing our bit. Um, we do, but that every little bit makes a difference. We're beyond that now. Um, most climate scientists are now saying we've missed the opportunity to do, to reach what the Paris Agreement was about, which is, um, uh, stopping our our um the rise to beyond 1.55 degrees so um realistically that's according to the un and ipcc it's pretty that window is closing if not closed um so we are heading for rocky waters it's how bad it needs to be basically and whether we as quakers can step up um to to do our bit um, that's a quite a gloomy start, sorry, <laughs> but th that's reality as well, um, sadly. Um, so, yeah, and I think I was sort of lulled to a certain extent by lots of government targets and corporations saying about, and they still do, about carbon emissions being you know, reduced and it's always 2050 and it still is that's far too late um so it's it's it, we are heading we, we're already in climate change and the, and the results are being felt by those in the global south and those who are have done the least to add to carbon emissions um and that's the unfairness that's the climate injustice bit that quakers i think have been wonderful at highlighting um that we in the west of spewing out carbon emissions. Um, we've sort of outsourced a lot of our manufacturing to China, India, and so on. So we can glibly, the politicians can glibly say, you know, we've reduced our carbon emissions. Yes, we have, but we, what we've done is outsourced it to dirtier factories and so on in China. So, um, and so on. So. Um, that's another injustice that we're doing the imperial stuff of of um, in the West benefiting from what the poorest people in the world are, are doing. So I suppose in a way, when I think about climate activism, the climate injustice side is is pretty key for me, and I'm sure for all of you. Um, it just feels so unfair that so many people are already having to board up boats and put their families at risk to to because they can't sustain life in their villages in Africa or wherever it is. They're just it's got too hot or there's too many floods or there's, you know, it's already happening. So um that that that's a slightly despairing sort of side to it. And although the window is the sort of UN sectors are saying the window's sort of 
both far we're, we're, we're on a highway to hell with our foot on the accelerator is a wonderful quote um but but we still haven't i'm not losing hope you talked about active hope there is still hope um and david attenborough did a video recently um which some of you might have said which is about us working together a different way of doing things so um when we hear about um system change that's what we need we need system change um i think last week I'm, i shared with you my favorite quote of all times which is a david attenborough one which is um anyone who believes in infinite growth on a finite planet is either mad or an economist and i was thinking how can so many very bright people who've done degrees in economics or whatever and in the financial se sector how can they still think we can plough up more and more forests and, you know, to take all the fish from the sea. You know that indigenous quote, when you cut down the last tree and eat the last fish and poison the last river, you will realise you cannot eat money. I was thinking, how can they still persist in that? And what's happening is that we're having an awful lot of greenwash. So I've been thinking it. I think about four years ago, when I sort of truly got what was happening, I, I decided to throw my energies mostly into money rebellion, which is the section of Extinction Rebellion, which deals with um, the financial sector and um, trying to get the billions and trillions of dollars out of um, deforestation and fossil fuels and and so on, um, because that for me, when we're running out of time rapidly with our foot on the accelerator, to me, that makes more sense than spending a lot of time doing organic gardening, even though I'd, to be honest, much rather be doing organic gardening. I'd love gardening and uh, yeah, my garden is sorely neglected at the moment, but I would much rather be doing that. Um, and, yeah, I can't in all conscience as a as a as a Quaker, as a human being, not do what I can to fight for those who are already drowning, literally. Um, and I know Quakers have stepped up. There's been some wonderful Quakers who've done some wonderful jobs in um, highlighting this. And, and um, Gay Delap is one of them in, in our meeting. Um, she's been very courageous. Um, so how do we grow the movement? Because I am very aware that Extinction Rebellion is not the only answer. And I think Extinction Rebellion will re realise that. Um, so the Climate Qua, I don't know if you've come across the Climate Qua, um, was formed after I was approached as part of the small little action teams. There's about seven of us who meet every week and we plan what Extinction Rebellion do in the UK targeting the financial sector. Um, and we've decided after decades of not having much success with getting the banks to sort of stop funding deep, um, fossil fuels and all the other stuff they fund, um, that enough is enough. So we decided we we're going to disrupt them, disrupt their AGMs peacefully. So I think some of you might have seen the video last week, um, which had a clip of, of the flash mob in action. And I approached Sue Crimlis, who is in our wonderful Earthquakes Affinity Group, which is um, David's in and um, well, a lot of people, you know, Ju Ju Julia is in, and a lot, lots of Quakers, you know, Mark Smalley and so on, um, are in this wonderful group, the Extinction Rebellion group, and we target a lot of, of the, the, the worst of the worst. Um, but we do it with humour, we do it with love, and we do it peacefully. Um, and um, I approached Sue Crimless, um after deciding that I did want to help disrupt HSBC's AGM, the, the biggest funders of new fossil fuel projects in Europe at the time, um, and so on. The second worst after Barclays for funding fossil fuels. Um, so I thought they were a worthy target. 
But I, I was scratching my head, this was a year ago, thinking, what can I do which will change hearts and minds? So I didn't really want to do the just shouting at them. You know, I I I wanted to do something which actually could get under under their sort of corporate mindset. I wanted to do something that could change hearts and minds. So um, I approached a um, NGO um, who I respected, who who ran a, an organ. I won't say which one, but an organisation that was um, very supportive. And I said, look, send me some ideas of things around the world that have managed to disrupt environmental conferences and so on. And one of the things, he forgot he'd done it, but he sent me a little clip of a group in America who did a, I think I said this last week, who did a flash mob singing and interrupted a fossil fuel um, uh, director doing his greenwash thing. And they, they'd sung God Bless America, but with alternative words. <laughs> Um, and I just thought it made the hair stand up at the back of my neck. It made me feel, wow, it just, you know, it, it got under their skin. You could see it had an impact. And I thought, that's what I want. That's what really changes hearts and minds. So I approached the wonderful Sue Kumlis, who's a doctor married to Mark Smalley, some of you know. Um, and she's a wonderful um, singer and musician and everything. And I said, Sue, how about us doing a flash mob interruption of HSBC's AGM? And you saw the results of that. And it got over a million views on Twitter and it got underneath their skin. And they have announced that they're a big, there was a big announcement in January that they were going to um, reduce... I mean, a substantial amount of funding has gone out of fossil fuels. Um, they're not going to be funding quite a few of the new fossil fuel projects. Um, so some of you would have seen their announcements. Their announcements. And I'm not saying it was all us. It, it wasn't. But I absolutely feel that we did get to the real shareholders. It was it was um, live as it was being broadcast. Our signal was live to the thousands of shareholders across the world. Um, who are listening into their AGM, and um, um, so um, yes, yeah, so so with all the things that I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get to the people who have the power. So I think far too often activism is about sort of do, having doing stuff, but we're actually only reaching us. We're not. We're speaking inside our little bubble. You know, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in and actually getting to the people in 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 charge of the the the, the blockers, the people who are actually um, stopping um, us having meaningful um, action in time for our. Well, it's not just Quaker children, actually. It's all children, but it's not just children. It's not just my two grandchildren that I I want to do this for, but. In reality, it's going to hit all of us as we need the NHS and so on. And that's why there's a very strong XR doctors group, um, because they know how stretched the NHS is now. But it's as we need these services, it's in the next you know, few years, 10 years or whatever, that it's going to hit all of us. So I, I think for a long time, I, I sort of used to talk about, I'm doing it for my grandchildren, but actually that was because I didn't quite realise the... Um, the how quickly things have changed, how quickly nature is is, is um, rebelling. Um, so I really do want to get under un, under the skin and change hearts and minds of those people in power. So that's why I'm doing singing. And um, yesterday we had a bit of fun. Um, eight of us, including Sue Krimlis, um, went on the trains. Yeah, Hattie's giving me a thumbs up. I've just posted it on the Bristol Climate Club website of um, one of us, one of our many, many flash mob singing um, protests, which was on the Bath train. He said activism can't be fun. <laughs> um, so eight of us um, learned a, a wonderful song, which is on our Climate Choir, Bristol Climate Choir website, which is subsidised the trains. And uh, we uh, sang it on the carriages and got wonderful, again, changing hearts and minds through humour and singing. 
I handed out leaflets to the big one, which I will also be talking about because I think David, you wanted me to mention that as well. Um, and yeah, we, we it was a really lovely way of sort of saying that let's subsidise the trains, let's let's support you know this green transition, um, and also let's get everyone, not just XR people, everyone to London on the on the on the the big one, which is where we will be, and Quakers are actively supporting it. Um, and Westminster Quaker Meeting House is, you know, got to open doors and supporting it massively. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my big plea in a way to Quakers is not to leave it so late that you look back and think, what could we have done when we could have done something, you know? Um, so, um yeah so we are i i was quite yeah the climate choir is coming to Lon london next friday oh. and um i've just found out that there, there's a, uh, something which i've posted on the Bristol climate choir website again which is the some of you might have got it an email from extinction rebellion saying you know, over 90 organisations are supporting this, um, come to London, and then saying what the, the key three or four events on each day are, and the climate car is there, central stage, on Friday. So people are being invited, if they're not in the climate car, to learn the first two verses of, of Voice of Change, which is on our climate car website, and come and meet us there, at 2.30 in Parliament Square on Friday in the southeast corner. Um, there'll be there'll be more details coming, but if you've got anyone who loves singing, um, get them to sing the first two verses or learn the first two verses of Voice of Change. And we will come, the Climate Choir will be joining you from an aviation march from Trafalgar Square. So it'll be 50 of the Red Rebels followed by uh, about 40 or 50 of the landing crew, led by Mark Smalley, um, followed by, hopefully, I, we've got 400 in the climate crime, hoping at least two, you know, 150, 200 of them come. We will be, and then there'll be the Samba band. We will all be issued with the earplugs at that point. So we'll be, and then there'll be thousands of other, mostly Bristol, but other, other, 
um, people from all over the world, uh, all over the world, all over the UK, who or possibly the world, I'm not sure, um, who are opposed to airport expansion will be on this massive um, march um, from up Whitehall, from Trafalgar Square into Parliament Square. And then we will march, we will split, they will go to picket the tra pump for transport at the Parliament Square, and we will launch off singing let us stand to into parliament square to join all the other waiting singers and then together we will sing voice of change and again it's about changing hearts and minds and it's about bringing everyone in so the climate choir has been set up it is not an xr choir actually even though i'm involved in money rebellion it is not an xr choir deliberately it's a choir that is there to support changes, climate change changes, but environmental changes. So we did the, the UK Divest, which is mainly Friends of the Earth action in London outside Blackwood and Vanguard uh, so two or three weeks ago and so on. Um, so, um, and we'll be doing other things with Mothers Rise Up, I think, um, I, I'm hoping. Maybe that shouldn't be recorded yet, but that seems to be something I'm working on. Um, and there'll be something around the Energy Charter Treaty coming up. There's lots of plans coming on, but it's trying to do maybe six very meaningful actions, um, which are mainly targeted within the financial sector in London, um, but not just with Extinction Rebellion, with other groups as well. Um, trying to do six actions, which I plan um, with Johnny's help. Um, so carefully targeted, so we make the most impact with our voices. You know, it's not just about singing sweetly. How lovely it would be just to go down to the local, uh, you know, orchard and sing sweetly. Um, we're running out of time, so I'm trying to target it. So we use our voices singing sweetly, but in ways that can change hearts and minds of those in power. You know, those who are ensuring the 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 um, carbon um, carbon carbon bombs that Hillary Saunders talks about, and so on. So um, I'm slightly rambly, but I hope so far have I kept you on all with me so far. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I would love to talk, to get um, David to show, to have a little pause and to show us in action with the UK Divest, um, the climate plan action with the UK Divest, Friends of the Earth action at, in the heart of the City of London um, with um, BlackRock and Vanguard, who are the biggest companies you know they're the ones who can change our course of our history if they decided not to fund these awful projects um they are so powerful so david can i let you try and put that video on with Thank any you. love I, i've rehearsed this it might work this week so we'll give it a go all the world better listen now everybody gotta take a little Today I'm here um, as part of the UK Divest Day of Action as one of 30 activities around the country designed to show that people are fed up with their pension funds putting more money into fossil fuels. BlackRock and Vanguard between them are financing mass destruction and climate change. So we're using our voices to change hearts and minds rather than shouting at them, we're singing and we're singing in the hope that they start investing more in renewables rather than propping up the fossil fuel industry. And it's our money, it's pension funds money that working people have built up, which is going in to fuel the further climate crisis. The senior people in these institutions, um, Vanguard, BlackRock and pension funds, must know how dangerous climate change is for the future of humanity. Why aren't they acting? They haven't felt enough pressure from their pension holders up till now, but it's growing. We will be walking slowly, singing through the city of London um, to all those asset managers who are putting profit before planet 
and we'll end up at Black Rock um, and hopefully we'll change hearts and minds. The UK Divest movement brings together people from all over the country, from Falkirk to Falmouth, and it has people who are trying to persuade their councils to move local government pension fund money out of fossil fuels and into the positive alternatives that we're going to need to transition our economies. Greening your pension is 21 times more effective than combined being vegetarian, stopping flying and changing your energy supply. It's huge. We have got a lot of power as pension holders. David, thank you for that. Um, I think everyone could hear it and you could see the sort of things that I'm trying to do with others. Um, and um, yeah, I, I'd love to hear your reactions to that actually before I, I launch in more. Um, yeah, and, and, any thoughts? Well, I've just made a note about some phone calls I've got to make. Um, to sort out my pension funds. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I, I, I didn't even think to look. So, okay, it's only one person, but I will speak to other people as well. And, and what was the what was the website at the end of your video? It's make you, my, your little. It's uh, make my money matter, and I've shared it with David. So I hope you can share it with all of you. And it has that quote about 20 times, 21 times more effective at, at mm -hmm. cutting carbon emissions than combined. Mm -hmm. right. And that's not to say don't do all the other stuff too, please do. But, you know, it, I, I, I suppose the emphasis I've got is don't get fixated on individual carbon footprint. But this is something that really could make a difference. The pension thing. And if people enough people know, and as Quakers, a lot of us are quite, elderly and you know I'm 60 coming up to pension sort of age so um yeah it's it's make my Man money matter it's got a wonderful website which includes a letter that you can send to your pension company saying how much are you investing in black rock for instance yeah so so don't don't let black rock off the hook when you when you contact them please <laughs> Joe, so when and where does the Bristol Choir meet? We meet once a month, although we're having an a actual uh, uh, a um, uh, an extra rehearsal this Wednesday. But once a month, the first Wednesday of the month, from seven till nine, at a beautiful venue in um, in Cotton. Um, we also have online Zoom, so people can join it by Zoom. But or people can just learn the audios from the Bristol Climate Choir website. The audios and scores are on there. Um, and we've got a section that Fiona Hamilton, that some of you know, has yes, put yeah. on our website. She's one of the community. We've got a core, wonderful core group within the Climate Choir group. So it's not just me. It's um, just the most functional, wonderful group of people I've ever worked with. They are amazing. Um, and um, Fiona is one of them, and uh, yeah, she she's got done a beautiful job along with support from MJ and others um, on making a very simple website. So you just click on the current songs, and it will say what we're what we're learning, and it includes the 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 um, first two verses of Voice of Change. If so, people who don't want to be in Climate Choir can can um, learn that and join us at 2.30 in Parliament Square on Friday. Um, so, but otherwise, Mary, it's, yeah, um, just go on the Bristol Climate Club website and you can get in touch if you want okay. to. Okay. I, this might be a diversion and I fully accept that if it is, but I have read before that XR seems to be 
a predominantly white organisation. Mm. It is. I mean, to be fair in Bristol, that we had our meetings at the Malcolm X Centre and all the rest of it, and I think you're right, it's very white, middle class. Um, I mean, I remember Gail Bad Bradbrook speaking on the pink boat at, at Bristol Bridge at one of the the um, rebellions, as they call them, um, saying, you know, the press is pillowing us for being white, middle class. She said, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm working class for starters, but... But she said, said actually, it's always been the case in any environmental movement that it's the people with privilege and with protection and having the time. And I, I do work, but I'm not working full time. So I've got that privilege. I know that if I get arrested, I will probably have better treatment than someone who's black um, and so on and so on. So I'm using my privilege to support those who can't. You know, it's like when I did, did the actions um, for protecting the Amazon rainforest, you know, I was doing it with someone who was from Brazil, who was right on the front line, and she's gone back to Brazil. You know, I'm doing it for those who can't. We should all be, I think, stepping up and using our white privilege to do it. And, you know, it, it's it's XI, I think, have missed a trick in lots of ways in getting more groups groups involved. But I don't, if I'm being honest, I don't think XR will be here for much longer. I think um, they've been, but, but what the trouble is, is there's something that's going to take its place and in the time, because it's very cleverly sort of planned. It, it takes years to build a movement. That's that slight concern, which is why I'm hoping that the big one brings in you know all those different activists who don't haven't agreed with XR for various reasons and I think a lot of it is media stuff so they'll focus on the one oh, right. who's that angry they'll focus on on Emma Thompson flying as though if she's an international artist she could actually do her job without flying you know what I mean they'll focus on the individual carbon footprint which again is just exactly what the fossil fuel industry wants focus mm. on pillaring people um and actually on that David is it possible now to have the video from S Stephen Fry which actually exactly talks to what you're saying Ray I think I think it's a very good link yeah can we wait a couple of minutes because yep. I failed to cue that up uh, and I will need to find it. And I haven't got the capacity. So, so. so it's, it's, it's. Um, I'll shout when it's ready. Yeah. Then, I mean, no, what, no worries. Um, any but other, not all any the um, Quakers either. I would say half of. Sorry. No. Sorry, I started. Right. I started an audio any, review. Um, any other comments? So we'll 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 go back to what you were saying, Ray. <laughs> you know, um, with that video. Any other comments from the video you've just seen? Oh, Oops. I am queuing up, I'm Stephen. Happy. Just see what I wrote down. Um. I didn't, I didn't write anything down. Well, I mean, basically, I thought it was a very well to, together film, very well edited, nicely pre presented with uh, clearness, spoken slowly enough and easy to lip read so that I could understand what was going on and who was speaking. Um, very clearly presented for a first timer. Um, Nice to see the banners and lots of variety in the banners. You hardly repeated any shots. Well, there were no shots repeated, but hardly any banners were shown twice so that you've got the great variety. Um, yeah, I agree with Ray. There was a lot of whites, but I don't know about... There was there was one or two prams as well. Um, and I, I thought your points were very well made uh, and and it was long enough to watch without feeling... Uh, yawn or any kind of intrusion um I, I mean i'm not saying a word of anyway but it, it that was uh, a well thought out piece thank you 
Thanks, Hattie. I mean, I, I have to say, say, I give full credit to David Mathias, who's a wonderful videographer, and he really gets what I'm trying to create um, and they make the key messages, really. Um, he's just fantastic. Mm. Um, so I had a question about the flash mob, Christabel, um, of, uh, yesterday that um, some of us from the Climate Bar um, were in action on the train, we boarded the train to Bath, um, eight of us, um, and sang a beautiful song, subsidised the oh, train. Environmental call. The, we, we, we managed to fit in in the short journey to Bath and then to, from Bristol to Bath and back. Um, three carriages were targeted <laughs> in each journey. Um, and apart from one of them where you just felt, I don't know what it was, it's just like a lot of people just didn't want to, to engage at all. But all the others, I would say, we got claps, we got lots of people interacting, taking um, the flyers for the big one. Um, yeah, we got and, and videoing and stuff. It was a wonderful way of doing outreach, again, changing hearts and minds. Um, and using a bit of humour as well. Um, we even had the station master who'd been sent, you know, to see what we were doing to try to get us to move on. It, he, even he allowed us to stay and, and the ticket office people took the flyers and said they'd enjoyed it too. Um, I do think though it does help if you, I'm not saying we were brilliant, there were only eight of us, we, but we were okay, we were pretty good. Um, you have to sing well, otherwise it's cringy. <laughs> So, so the rehearsals are important. You change hearts and minds when it's done well. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, David, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. I've got it there. Thank you. Here we go. If you support environmental causes and organisations like Extinction Rebellion, people, especially if one's in the public eye, want to cry hypocrite. Look at him, he's wearing clothes. He's wearing clothes and he's pretending to care about the environment. The clothes that you're wearing owe their existence to oil. You've got a nice wooden thing behind you. What's that made of? Oh, Piers, don't do this. You did this to Skeena about TVs. Just ask you a question. What's it made of? You're going to be called a hypocrite because you live in the modern world rather than in a piece of Hessian sacking, I think, as George Monbiot once said, in a ditch. Unless you do that, no one will believe you can. Of course, if you do do that, they'll think you're just a weirdo. But the fact is, reasonable people, I think, understand that something has to be done about fossil fuels, most of all, about our insatiable appetite for them. We are on a fast track to climate disaster. Major cities underwater, unprecedented heat waves, terrifying storms, widespread water shortages, the extinction of a million species of plants and animals, and this is not fiction or exaggeration. It is what science tells us will result from our current energy policies. We should remind ourselves why fossil fuels are painted as the bandits in this particular episode. These gasoline molecules are untamed and unruly. Well, you can't, in our world, burn fossil fuels without producing carbon dioxide, which flies up into the atmosphere and acts as a barrier, stopping heat, and infrared and other things, getting out and dissipating in space and therefore creating what's known as a greenhouse effect. Because like a greenhouse, which is glass, it keeps the heat trapped in. And so the climate goes up. And when the climate goes up even by the smallest amount, it affects everything. We live in a very balanced kind of world. Over hundreds of millions, thousands of millions, really, of years, this planet has established its balance that allows for the life it has now. Of course, if it goes and we don't do anything about it, it will start again and some other forms of life will be able to thrive, but not humans and not mammals and not most of the creatures and landscapes that we know and love will be wiped out. And it will be our fault because we're the ones who burn the fossil fuels. And our whole society and way of life is based on what we call a carbon economy, really, because our cars and our power, our fuel, the things we use to make everything, even if something like this pullover, which is made from a sheep's 
wool, but the electricity and the effort and the transport and the whole thing is based on carbon fuels. And who are we to deny it, especially to developing countries, you might say? So great is our demand that we're looking for new energy in places once considered sacrosanct. We're looking for uh, underexplored areas in the world with the potential for large discoveries of oil and gas. And Namibia came out very high on that list. We took a license for that area, and now we're moving ahead to explore it. And that's my point. We have to talk about this, and we have to plan. It's no good just saying everybody give up carbon use, because we can't. Ultimately, it's up to governments. I apologize for the way this process has unfolded. It's also vital that we um, protect this package. You need to get them to recognize that this is the most serious crisis that humanity has ever faced. And that therefore we should plan. We should plan in a friendly way, a way that involves all of humanity as brothers and sisters together. And I know this sounds naive, and I know that recent history shows that apparently we don't regard each other as brothers and sisters, and we've never shown greater animosity. But it is possible, and deep down inside us, we know that that's what we want. I've got godchildren, and I've got nephews and nieces, and I care about the world they're going to live in. And it strikes me as obscene, not that they're going to have a lower standard of living and a harder time buying houses because all that's bad enough. But that the very fabric and structure and feel of the world will be awful for them unless we start to take steps, real steps. And they're the ones who are leading us to taking those steps. And they're doing it in a very impressive way, I think. It's loud and it's disruptive. We should stop and think about the word disruption for a moment. Do you remember when Facebook started? Zuckerberg said, move fast and break things. Break things is Anglo-Saxon for disruption. Disruption just means breaking. Disruption can, can be a, an awful thing. It can ruin the way the world is. But there's another form of disruption, which is to stop the world going down the wrong path, to disrupt a destructive journey. And that's what Extinction Rebellion, for example, does. And of course it's maddening. Who wants to be stuck in a traffic jam, not being able to cross a bridge, not being able to use a motorway, not being able to get home for this holiday or to see their family, or all kinds of legitimate and utterly reasonable excuses for being maddened by Extinction Rebellion. Just put yourselves 10 or 15 years in the future and look around a ruined landscape where there's violence and unpleasantness and instability and a kind of Mad Max horror threatening. And then say, damn, it was a nuisance when I couldn't cross that bridge. Hmm? The fact is, you sometimes have to sacrifice the present to save the future. And all that's being asked to sacrifice is some of the conveniences that will never exist if we don't act now. I don't suppose that what I've said is likely to change the mind of somebody who finds Extinction Rebellion maddening, but maybe it might just encourage some people who aren't sure whether or not this is the right direction of travel, this kind of disruption, this kind of fury. I would suggest it is, and I'm a, an old man whose time is past, but you are likely statistically to be younger than me, so you've got more at stake and you've probably got more energy and sense too. So bless you and good luck. Okay, there you go. Well, thanks, David. Um, we're running out of time, so I, I won't ask to, for too much feedback, but brief brief comments. Any, any, any Anyone sort of um, want to have a quick, quick response to that. David. Well, if, if nobody else is saying anything, um, 
there, there are things coming from the community level, uh, not necessarily government. So Bristol has just started a 400 million pound program for a district heating network that will help reduce emissions. And uh, there's moves afoot within the community to build a network of resilient centers, uh, hubs that would um, build out solar across the city in the same way that Lawrence Western have just put up a wind turbine. So communities are starting to fund these things. And uh, in next October, I believe, we will have the opportunity to vote. And one of the parties will be standing on a platform of uh, net zero by 2030. So that, that will be interesting. David, thank you for that. Because that's the important thing to say, say is that yes, perhaps in some ways we have to just go local as well. Um, and my two hopes, if you're thinking about, from a personal point of view, what, what my two hopes are, three hopes, sorry. So one of them is is the local thing that we we locally try and build this up from the, from the, from the, from the grassroots. You know, the, the Dave, David has talked very eloquently about you know solar pa panels, for instance. You know, there are there are the solutions are there actually. So, you know, it's not that we can't do it, the solutions are there. And, and the two things that I think could make a difference is citizens assemblies, which if any of you have had a chance to watch the BBC, um, it's on BBC iPlayer, citizens assembly, David Attenborough um, opens opens the first one. And that's, um, that, that's well worth seeing. Citizens assemblies are a fantastic way of leaving politicians out and getting citizens to be educated, really, about what the um, the problems are and possible solutions. Um, there is going to be straight after our singing um, in in Parliament Square. Uh, finishes will be singing and um, finishing singing at three. Actually, we'll then be going on the climate poll, be going on to pick up the treasury and sing there. But but um, for anyone else, that you can stay. There's going to be from three till four thirty. There'll be a a mass citizens assembly in Parliament Square. So one, if you haven't had a chance to see it in action, it's, it's wonderful. The UN are working on, on getting more citizens assemblies up and, and going and stuff. Um, look at look it up, citizens assemblies. It's a fantastic way of, 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 of you know, getting things in the, in, the, in the right direction. The other thing that I've got a big hope for is the ecocide law. Um, and straight after this, I've been invited to have a meeting with Sue Miller, who's one of the four paid workers for the Stop International Ecocide campaign. And she wants to fill me in on the latest stuff. So I've been working with Hilary Saunders and David George and Deborah Mitchell and other wonderful Quakers and to try and get Quakers to really make a difference and step up and support an ecocide law in an active way. And I'm really, you know, heartened that Bristol area meeting have supported that. Um, it's wonderful. Um, we need it quick, though, for the vanguards and black box and the shells and BPs and so on, and, and governments. Um, there are carbon bombs looming, you know, which are our big carbon projects like Cumbrian, mile, my, um, Cumbrian coal mine and um, North Sea oil um, licenses and um, various Dani mega mine and, and so on and so on. There's, there's lots of stuff that actually is going to be countering what we're trying to do on the ground. So we need an ecocide law. So um, I'm I'm saying Quakers could actually actively um, support it by working with faith leaders across the world and getting all of them to sign an open published letter supporting an ecocide law and calling for it. Um, so if you had, you know, it's not Pope Francis is way behind. You know, she's where he's way ahead of the Quakers on this one. Um, but if we had Quakers using the wonderful things, the way that we are different in the sense we work with faith leaders very effectively, we we punch above our weight. Um, if we can use that influence on the world stage to work with all the faith leaders, to say yes, we want an eco side law that represents billions, billions of, of the population. Um, and um, so that that that's what why I'm pushing on the eco side thing because I'm thinking we're running out of time. What can we as Quakers do that can make a difference? And that's one big one. 
I am okay. actually running out of time because I've only got five or six minutes left. But, and I want to see if any of you have got any comments to what I've we've... We 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 usually go over on these talks, so don't uh, we are we are quite flexible when it comes to time. The only thing uh, is, I've got a meeting with the the lawyer from the Stop International Ecoside campaign, so I will have okay. to fairly promptly. <laughs> one one small point: there is a lot more Americans are now starting to take forward the ideas of this as tornado rip across their country, destroying towns and destroying communities. And this is climate change writ large. Mm -hmm. And I think they are start they're starting to think about this in a more because it's affecting them now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean sadly I don't want it to be that when we're actually you know knee high in water that we wake up but you know um and that's why the eco side law would kick in before it became law so you know they're, they're saying well maybe a couple of years before it became law and it is moving towards that the eu have just um, announced something very dramatic about eco side law supporting it um it would it would be insurance you know for the big carbon bomb things the the um fossil fuel projects and so on um and the deforestation projects and the and 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 um mass um ecocide projects um they they wouldn't be able to get insurance for those projects before it kicked in so you know um that that it, it, it would be yeah it's so important <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say um, that there are a lot of difficulties in getting the wider population demonstrating its support for this. Um, if you have any form of disability, uh, for example, whatever your age, um, going on a demonstration is really, really difficult. However, it's very, very important because people need to... I think seeing an elderly person uh, in, or, or, or and or someone in a wheelchair and also small children, those two extremes, actually seeing them in those big demonstrations in London is really going to make a difference. Um, if, if that, that, I, I hope that's going to happen. And um, yeah, it, it's just, it's partly uh, to make sure we've got full representation, but it's also the, the impact that I think those two extremes might have on people who haven't really taken much notice previously. I don't know. Patsy, I completely am making them accessible. I mean, XR had a had a talk about exactly that a few weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. And there, there are particular points for supporting families with young children, people with disabilities within the big one. There, there mm -hmm. will be sort of meeting points and support for that there are also i mean thinking the covid um pandemic sort of restrictions yeah. got us thinking outside the box so on yeah. the on the sharkleys.co.uk website the barclays website there's a whole section on what can you do which doesn't involve taking the streets but one of them and, and that was written by my husband actually at that Sharpsy's website. And one of the things is leaving a What's good it called? Sharpsy? Sharp, sharply. So shark, oh. as in, as in the, <laughs> the great big shark. Shark lays. Um, lays. Shark lays. S-H-A-R-K-L-A-Y-S. Shark lays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at that, what can you do? Barclays, is, you know, Actually, unfortunately, in some ways, but wonderfully in other ways, they're not the biggest funders of fossil fuels in Europe now. We just found out a few days ago they are the second biggest funders of fossil fuels in Europe. So they are the worst in in the UK. Right. Funding that. So definitely worthy of, of your thing. But the reason I said that is that we're thinking again, how can we reach inside those corporations to those key people how do we reach outside our bubble whether we're in a wheelchair or not what's the most effective things to do so what my husband's done is done 
tiny little video of how to leave an effective Google review. Now, you don't have to be techy to do this because I'm not. And it points out exactly step by step what you can do. And if you can leave it, um, it um, um, include a, a photograph from the two, over 250 protests that have taken part, which are on that website um, across the UK in the last, I think, 18 months. If you can include a video or photograph, or um, you, you get even more views. But if not, don't worry. Um, but that little video will show you how to leave a Google review. So anyone who's looking up where their nearest branch of Barclays is in Stroud or wherever it is, um, they will see on that home page the review, the reviews. And I've had over 50,000 views of my Google review. A fella from London has had over 100,000. Now, those reviews saying, please, you know, We'll say, and it says how to leave it. So it's saying it's not the fault of the frontline staff. You know, this is the fault of their management who's still funding, you know, da 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 da. Um, and um, that is getting right under their skin. And I'll tell you one of the ways it's getting right under their skin is because we sent over a hundred of these wonderful mugs, Sharkey's mugs. And I don't know if you can see that. It says at the bottom of all this is the future of our children. And for the real facts about Barclays, see sharkeys.co.uk. Yeah, and it and they all had a Barclays flyer in them and so on with the facts and so on and so on. And we got a hundred, I just thought, how can we get inside, inside these organizations to the people? So with the help of some wonderful um, rebel elders, as we call the, the an older affinity group uh, within XR, um, did the research. And two of them were at Bristol Museum actually, but um, they, they were sent to key journalists, key, um, Makers and Shakers, David Daffenberg got one and so on. Um, but very importantly, 10 of them were sent to Barclays executives who were, who were and, and also shareholders, key shareholders, laptop being Larry Fink's being one of the shareholders with, mm. with Barclays. And we know, because we've had um, feedback from one of the NGOs, I found out that um, she had a Zoom meeting with the executive board and the new CEO of Barclays. Um, last year and it was a zoom one and he was drinking out of his Sharkey's mug and he said he drinks out of it every day and it urges him to do better well at the moment it's greenwash but we know they know what these 250 protests that now they know about those because the media wouldn't have reported many of them before they know that we're leaving google reviews um, and there's a many, many, many other things you can do. There's a couple of spoof videos that we made during the pandemic. There are loads of things you can do, which don't always take, mean taking to the street. But just to reassure you that XR are really trying hard with this big one to, to make it um, accessible. So please do go on their website for the big one. Um, and uh, yeah, and Westminster Meeting House at Quakers are really trying their best to help as well. They've been wonderful. So I think I'm going to have to wind it up now because I'm going to be late otherwise for the meeting. But um, I hope it's been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm afraid it's a bit gloomier than last one because it's like, like yeah, hitting you with what's what's happening. But we can... You know that uh, the the old quote: "Never doubt that this, this small was it." I can't remember the exact quote. It's all bad. A committed activist can change the world. Indeed, that's the only thing that ever has. That's a total misquote. But you know, you know. <laughs> so only a, a small number of Quakers and others can make a real difference. I think. No, no. So, yeah, but thank you all, and for being Quakers. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. <laughs> and Bye. I don't know how to copy the chat, but that's the next thing to do. Well, I will put the links and the description when I post this on YouTube. And so I've, given you, I've, I've given you some links, haven't I? Both yeah, of you, yeah. Patsy, and thank so, you for uh, making So, so yeah. if you look, look down below, if you're watching this, 
later you'll find all the links oh thank you take care everyone have a good day thank you so much joe we'll keep coming back to this thank you thank you um lots to do Christopher was saying uh, to uh, could we explain um shark is uh, it's a, a website isn't it shark lays shark yep. and then l-a-y-s dot co dot uk but i've not i've only just heard about it so what, what, I'll, put, I'll put a link in the description underneath the video right brilliant okay okay christopher did you oh, great <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Do you think it's .co.uk? Yeah. It's I've, I've written .co.uk. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, that right. was great. Yeah. She's yeah. so good and so calm about just it, just explaining. And the same with Stephen Fry. Yeah. 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 Just you know. Mm. No, I I, so I just thought it. Turned, I, I, I really think it matters on big demonstrations to have a wider mix of the population visible, you know, people of every colour and of every age, because children make you think about, you know, the future, um, uh, elderly people or disabled people make you think about, I don't know, I'm not sure what they make you think about, because I'm one of them now, but... Um, they make me feel that I'm joining in and I'm supporting it, even if they take away my pension, which, you know, it's, it's, it's just nice to having a wide range, having a wide range on view, I think. Excellent. I don't disagree, but uh, Joe makes a very strong point that disadvantaged people are having a bad enough time as it is. You know, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement is because they're, they're they have yeah. such short lives. They're so much more likely to be picked up by the police and so on. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's it's those who can should and 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 yeah. we must. Yeah, definitely. Good point. Um, so before we all depart, Patsy, it is next week. Oh, good. Yes. I see a a, a person. Right in the middle of it, who is going to be speaking to us next week, which is Graham. Uh, <laughs> which we shall be interested to see, to listen to, then comment we, on. Do we, do we have Graham's title before us? Uh, uh, I have it here, is Who Started the War in Ukraine? Okay. Very, very wow. tough <laughs> I, I think it was small green aliens, personally, but there you go. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ben. I'm really, really looking forward to that. It's really good. Good question. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you, folks. And have a good day. Yeah. Energy, peace.